Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. What's up? Hey, dude. How's your weekend? It's good. How yeah. you doing? Nothing much. Kind of want to talk to you about something. Oh, so I don't know if you knew this, but it's uh, Pastor Appreciation Month. October already. Yeah, yeah, it is. So I think yeah. we should do something really special. What do you want to do? Um, so I got an idea. Okay. Uh, I've been writing a song for Pastor. Uh, think I think I'm gonna show it to you. Get, see what you think. Hear it? Yeah. All right. Uh, thinking, right. you know, maybe we could play it. Like, yeah. Let's work it out. Um, so yeah, check it out. Oh. My favorite thing about the pastors here at Crossroads Church is their realness um, and their ability to recognize that uh, humanity makes mistakes and they are sinners, but we're called to love anyway. I love their faithfulness in serving the Lord, giving Him their best. Um, excellence is very uh, fresh on their heart, even though they've been through a lot um, throughout their whole life. Like they've always been faithful to Him and put Him first in His will and His word. Hold on, one second. Sorry. You know what I like about Pastor Marcus and Pastor Natalie is they really care for people. They care for the lost and they're such giving people. Thank you all, all three of you, for all that you do for us. You have walked with my family through some really hard stuff and are continuing to do so, but you do that through the love and leadership that you give all of us. The way you've touched my children's hearts and mine is huge. And Pastor Joel, your candid delivery is refreshing and is convicting with movement. My favorite thing about our pastors is that they make this church feel like a home and feel like a family. And our pastors just make the whole experience um, and participation of being in groups, being on the worship team, doing whatever you want to do. They make it a point to make sure that you're where you're supposed to be. One of my very favorite things about Pastor Marcus is that he is so real. It's so refreshing to be around him because he's so honest and real and he genuinely loves people. And Natalie, you have such a big heart for this community, for people. You love our kids so much. You love everyone's kids so much, but I'm glad you love our kids and y'all are like family to us. Pastor Joel, you are one of my best friends and every time I hang out with you, I leave a better person with a new perspective and I'm so grateful for you. You always tell the truth in love. We love you guys. Oh, that's not right. Uh. Oh, pastor, pastor, pastor. Uh, yeah, that's not right. Hey, we're continuing our series this morning called The Right question where we're talking about the important things we need to be asking ourselves to make sure that we're living, I hate to say our best life, but in many ways living our best life, like living the way that God wants us to live in the fullness, the abundant life that God promises th- for us. Um, and today we're going to talk about specifically this, a, a question that I think can really save you a lot of trouble. And we're going to talk specifically about these, these, these challenges we face that aren't necessarily black or white, wrong or right. How many of you know there's a lot of those things in life where it's just like, it's just not black and white. It's, uh, there's certain things where you're like, don't do it. That's sin. For example, you don't have to ask God's guidance on whether you're supposed to cheat on your wife. Don't do it. It's all in there. It's all written down. No question about that. But there's a lot of other things in life like, man, is this a good time to be stepping out and buying this over here? Should we go on vacation? Should we do this? And we come to these challenges in life where we're like, man, God, I need your guidance. And, and what I've found, you know, early on in my walk with God, I would ask him about everything. Jesus, should I park over here? Jesus, should I do this? But I found that the longer I walk with him, he wouldn't give me turn by turn instructions. And I'd get frustrated. I'm like, did I do something wrong? And what I came to realize is that, you know, part of maturity is learning how to do things on your own without having to have turn-by-turn instructions. My seven-year-old daughter, every morning, it's a battle. The other day, I'm like, Elise, it's time to school, go to school. 
what's wrong with what you've got going on here? And she's like, nothing, I'm ready. I'm like, you don't have socks on, sweetheart. <laughs> oh yeah, socks. Like we put on socks every morning, sweetheart. It's not rocket science. Let's get this down, right? But Mike, here's the thing. Like she's seven, constantly reminding her you got to wear underwear, socks, things like that. <laughs> if she's still 21 and I'm having to give her turn by turn instructions, I've done something wrong. I have failed as a father if I'm like, sweetheart, you got to wear socks. You just, you know, especially when you got shoes on, right? So I don't know. Actually, nowadays, isn't that kind of hip to not wear socks? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> who knows what style will be then? <laughs> Things are going, anyway. The goal is, though, that you should grow up into maturity. And maturity is you don't need turn-by-turn instructions. And here's the beautiful thing about the, the, serving, serving the Lord. You know, the, we always hear the, the way is narrow that leads to eternal life. yes. The way is narrow. The only way you get to God is through Jesus Christ. He's the door. But once you get in that door, the world is full of possibilities. King David said this. He said, you brought me to a wide open place. It's like he's like, all right, you're in the gate. The only way you got here was through Jesus. It wasn't anything you did on your own. Now you've got a free run of the place. St. Augustine, he said it this way. He said, love God and do as you please. For the heart trained in love to God will do nothing to offend the beloved. If you're seeking to serve the Lord, he's forgiven you of your sins. Man, you just run and play and have fun out there. And if, he, if you're doing something, he'll tell you. You'll feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit. No, nope, not supposed to do that. But it's this wide open place. And a lot of times it's so wide open that we go, there's just too many options. I just don't know what to do. So we're going to talk today about what to do when you get to a place that you just don't know what to do because it's not black and white. It's not like one thing's wrong and one thing's right. It's like there's two good options. I had that situation happen to me um, in my early 20s. I applied for this uh, fellowship. So I'd got my bachelor's degree in political science and I thought I wanted to pursue the international relations, political science domain. So I went and I applied for this full ride fellowship uh, for international relations. I would go to Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I would study there for two years. I'd walk out with a master's degree. And then after that, I would have a job basically going and talking to rotary clubs around the country about international relations related things. Um, it seemed like a sweet opportunity. Well, I applied for it, went through all these interviews, and they said, okay, now you wait. It's a long waiting process. And in, during that time, I went and actually got another master's degree, and I went and got a master's degree in counseling. And I discovered, man, counseling, I really enjoy doing this. I like working with people. I like the psychology of it. I also met my wife during that time, and I ended up getting married. And uh, everything had changed. And we talked about that last week, the importance of how in every season of life, you have to evaluate what's the right sacrifice to make because the, the target is a moving target. If you, didn't listen, if you weren't here for last week's message, man, uh, I would encourage you to go and listen to that on the app. We talked about just the importance of making the right sacrifices in the right seasons of life. And so everything had changed for me. And I'll never forget, I got this call. I was in Washington, D.C. And uh, I was like, who is calling me? And I answered. And they said, hey, this, we're calling. You've been awarded the Full Ride Fellowship in Argentina. And I remember thinking, yes, but then I realized, wait, everything in my life has changed. I got a wife now. <laughs> like everything has changed. And I don't even know if I want to go into international relations anymore, but it was a free ride fellowship. Hello, who would turn that down? Very tricky situation. So I went to Emily and we started praying about it and we didn't feel like there's a right or wrong answer. We sought counsel. But the thing we started to ask ourselves is what I'm going to encourage you guys to ask today. And it's a question regarding wisdom. So we've been, in this series, we've been focused on this one verse that says this. It says, the prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. And, and everybody in here, we've all been this, this, guy, or this guy or lady before, right? The simple, like, you know, you saw there were problems early on in the marriage or early on in dating, but you're like, well, you know, love, I just love them. And, and, your, and your mom's like, Mija, I don't think so. <laughs> like, but mom, he's really good deep down in his heart. <laughs> and as you're walking away from signing the divorce papers, you're going, man, they called it. I saw it even. I even saw the warning signs, but I just had to have what I wanted. We all done that, right? The bill comes due. Like, why, what was I thinking when I took, took out that loan? And you're like, oh we've all been in the simple but we want to be the person who is prudent the person who is wise so that's the question we want to ask today is it wise when it comes to those decisions that aren't black or white wrong or right 
There's certain things in life you just go, which way do I go? I don't know which way to go. And you may have this situation right now financially. You're saying, man, I could buy that, or I don't know where the economy's going. I don't know if it's best right now with the way the economy's going. I could step into this over here. Man, I could do this with my family. I could take the job on the other side of the country. And neither one are wrong or right. You're just trying to figure out, Lord, what's your will in this? And a lot of times he's silent. So the question we start to ask is, is it wise? Now, wisdom is simply this. Wisdom is the right application of knowledge. My dad, wisest man I know, he calls it, he's sitting right here on the front row, by the way. Um, he calls wisdom skillful living. Like just, you ever seen somebody that, man, they just know how to make life work for them. Wisdom is understanding the fact that there are principles. There's, wisdom is understanding the way the world works. And the cool thing about the Bible is, is, man, it is full of principles. In fact, there's these three books called the wisdom books. Uh, it's Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, which happens to be my favorite book of the Bible, uh, and, and, and the book of Job. And in there, they talk about all these principles. And principles, here's the thing about principles. They're not black and white, wrong or right thinking. They're basically just God saying, hey, I created the world and here's how it works. And if you do this, you'll get this. One of my favorite Proverbs, Proverbs 27 says this, if you greet your neighbor loudly early in the morning it will be taken as a curse. <laughs> you ever worked with one of those obnoxious morning people? I had a 4.45 shift at the airport for a while, and this guy, his supervisor of mine, he'd be like, good morning, Joel. Isn't it good to be alive this morning? I'm like, Jeff, shut up. Like, <laughs> it's not saying it's bad to be a morning person. It's just saying if you're too extravagant in the morning with your greeting, people are not going to like it. So you choose what you're going to do. Another one says, the borrower is slave to the lender. Nothing sinful about taking out a loan. Sometimes you got to pay that car transmission bill. Just know this. When you borrow someone's money, they're going to be calling asking for it back. Right. You're going to be their slave. Hey, when are you going to pay me? When are you going to pay me? So just know if you need to take out a loan, just know it's going to make you a slave. Right. So principles are like that. They just say, here's how it works. And, 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 Here's the, what you can expect if you do that. And so wisdom is understanding how these things work. And, and listen, you can have knowledge without wisdom. An example of this is some of the most brilliant marriage counselors I know have been divorced multiple times. And it's not because they're like, oh, I just learned how to do it. You know, it's because they know the right knowledge, but they don't know how to apply it to their life. And that's the disconnect for a lot of us. That's why we tell our kids, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> But they know. Wisdom is the ability to rightly apply knowledge. And, there, and there's one, one thing that I think is the most important when it comes to what knowledge you need to learn to apply. And the knowledge that's most powerful when you're trying to make a decision and you're not hearing anything from God is knowledge of yourself. Socrates said this. He said, know thyself. Self-awareness. How many of us just charge ahead and we never take the time to figure out what's really going on deep inside of us. It's like we know there's something that triggers certain things. It's like anytime you get around that certain person, you go, why do I always do that when I get around that person? King Solomon said it this way. I love the way he worded this. Wisest man that ever lived. He said, the purpose in a man's heart is like deep water. But a man, a person of understanding will draw it out. He's basically saying, you're a really deep person, even if you don't think you are. Just below the surface, there's all sorts of things that are motivating you and driving you. And sometimes you wonder, why did I do that when this happened? Well, it's because deep within you, there's like this well. And it's a deep, profound thing. And, and, and you're a deep person, whether you realize it or not. You're like, oh, I'm not that deep of a person. Oh, yes, you are. You've got all these experiences from the past. And you make decisions based on experiences from the past. You've got fears within you. And a lot of times we try and ignore those things, but they just keep bubbling up like a well. So King Solomon is saying, if you really want to be wise and you really want to figure out why do I do the things I'm doing and I know and I, you really want to know yourself so you can rightly apply what you know about yourself to your future, he says, you got a little kind of drop that bucket down there and dig deep from that well to get the deep stuff. And sometimes we, we don't like to do that because we don't necessarily think we're going to like what we see if we dig a little deeper, right? So you just keep charging ahead. But what happens when you keep charging ahead? It says the simple pay the price, which is why knowing yourself is so important. There's three things I think we need to ask ourselves based on what we know about ourselves when it comes to making those decisions that aren't necessarily black or white, wrong or right. First one is this. Is this wise based on my past history? You know you. 
Ask yourself, what happened the last time I did this? Jesus. And I'm talking even small decisions. What happened last time I went to, to the bar with my friends from work after work instead of going home? Jesus. How'd it go? Yeah. Wife received that well? <laughs> Things go great? Oh, I'm so glad, honey. <laughs> How'd it go? Think about it, because here, here's the challenge that we all face as humans. There's this guy named Charles Duhigg. He wrote a book called The Power of Habit, and he said that basically 40 to 45% of what we do in any given day is habit-based, because your brain is trying to save energy. It doesn't want to have to make every decision, so it just has these habits. When this happens, I'll do this. When this happens, I'll do this. He says there's these triggers, and when the triggers fire, if you don't know deep what's going on inside of you, you're just going to go on habit. He says, example, with trying, people that are trying to beat smoking, he says the best way to change a habit is to change up your routine. Because he says, usually what makes you want to get a cigarette is something triggers. So it's either the coffee, at the coffee break, and then you're like, oh, now I need to have a cigarette. Or, or he's saying a lot of people, the reason they start smoking is because that's the social thing to do. You get a smoke break, you know, the company's like, you can have your smoke break six blocks down the road. So everybody walks six blocks down the road, they have their little social break, and then come back. And that's the trigger. And he says, you got to break the triggers. So some of the times the best time to change a habit is when you're on vacation because all the triggers are gone. And it takes a few weeks to break a habit. But my point is this. You're very prone to make the same mistakes over and over again if you don't realize what's going on inside of you that's triggering those desires and those needs within you and those things that you're wanting, those cravings. And unless you're deeply aware of your past history in this, you can get in deep trouble. I have a really good friend. She broke free from her drug addiction. She's found Jesus. She's like, I just feel called to go back and minister to those friends of mine at the drug house. And I said, yes, sweetheart, somebody needs to minister to them, but it ain't you. Because you know you. You're going to fall back into that. No, no, I'm free from it now. Jesus set me free. And she went right back to it. In the name of ministering to her friends, she fell right back into it. And there's just certain things, guys, Listen. You shouldn't do it because you know what happened last time you did it. And some of you, you have stuff in your family history. My dad, his father was this raging alcoholic. So when we grew up, there was no alcohol in our house. And dad wasn't super legalistic about it. He's just like, our family, man, we're prone to this. And it ain't going to go pretty if we start spiraling out of control with alcohol. So he just kept it out of the house. And some of you, you know there's stuff in your family history that you're prone to. You just need to get rid of it. Because it's not wise. It's not wrong. Nothing wrong with alcohol, but it ain't wise based on your family's history. Is it wise based on my past? The next thing you need to ask is this. Is it wise based on my present circumstances? Be honest about where you're at right now. I was, this is so tragic, but I was talking to this lady and she said, you know, our marriage was rough right from the start, but I just knew once we had that first baby together, it would just draw us together. She's like, and then it just, it got worse. And so I just knew once we have that second one, we'll be so busy caring for the babies. So we won't fight. She's divorced now, single mother. I feel so sorry for her. But I think, what were you thinking? Like adding to complexity to complexity never, ever creates simplicity. But what do most of us do when things get messed up or complicated in a relationship? We're like, if I can just add one more thing. There's this famous French author, the guy that wrote, uh, actually, The Little Prince, and he said, perfection is attained not when there is nothing more to be added, but when there is nothing more to be taken away. Oftentimes, in a situation, we want to add stuff that's actually going to complicate things, but what you really need to do is step back and go, this isn't the best time for that. I was talking to another guy one time, and he was just lamenting to me all the debt he was carrying. He's like, There's so, it's so stressful getting all these bills and debt. He's like, I just need like a month vacation to get away from it. <laughs> And I said, how, I literally, this, li this literally came out of this guy's mouth. I said, how are you going to pay for that? He's like, oh, just put it on credit card. What does it matter anyway? <laughs> but how many times do we do that? Pastor Mark has given an amazing message about three weeks ago about how we tend to lie to ourselves. Ain't nobody can lie to me like me. I am so smooth about it. <laughs> Joel, you know, you really deserve that. You had a rough week. You really deserve, and, and you know, you're a good person really overall, Joelle. And I'm like, I am a good person. <laughs> and then I go do it, the simple, and then I'm like, ah, 
what was I thinking? Now I have this bill coming every month. Because on an impulse, I went and got that thing I deserved. <laughs> Is it wise based on your present circumstances? Financially, look at your finances. Is it wise to be taking out that extra car payment? Yeah, it's only $100 more a month. But is it wise? It's not bad. Is it wise? You've got to constantly be asking yourself. Because there's so many things in life that we get ourselves into situations that we create unnecessary suffering from lack of wisdom. You know, there's some suffering in life that's just necessary. It says in the kingdom, it says, through much suffering we enter the kingdom of God. When there's necessary suffering in your life, the suffering God's using to build you into who he wants you to be, you just keep perspective on that and endure it. It says, endure it like a good soldier, it says in the Bible. But there's some suffering in life that we just, it's unnecessary. We just create it because we just, we work against how the principles work. Or we just lie to ourselves and say, eh, this will be all right. The simple, keep going and pay the price. So is it wise based on your present circumstances? And then, then the final question to ask is this. Is it wise based on the future I want for my family and me? Now this is super important. Listen, listen, listen. What I find with most people is they don't actually know what they want for their future. They only know what they don't want. So most of us spend most of our life running from what we don't want rather than running to what we do want. I see this with men all the time. They grew up in poverty and they're like, I'm going to make sure my family's never poor. So they're working their tail off trying to give their family all the money. And you say, what do you want? And they're like, I just, I don't want to be poor. I'm like, that's what you don't want. What do you want? Well, I just, I don't want to be poor. Well, name what you do want. And then they do name what they do want, but, but they, they can't actually name what they want. And what it ends up actually being is, what do you want? Well, I just need a little bit more. And then I'll feel like I have what I need. But they can't articulate what they actually do want. And so consequently, they're on a hamster wheel. Running and running and running. I see this in marriages. Sometimes spouses, they just don't know what they don't want. They know what they don't want, but they don't know what they do want. So you say, you should know better. And the, sp the husband's like, I what do you want? Well, you should know what I want. We've been married for 15 years. <laughs> yeah, but I don't. And the reality is, you don't even know what you really want. You just know what you don't want. I just don't want to be like my mom. Well, what do you want to be? And instead of articulating what you actually do want, most of us spend all of our time saying what we don't want. And here's the danger for us of saying what we do want is this. When we say it, it's set up as this standard and we go, but what if I don't get what I really want? And then I'll be even more disappointed in life and discouraged. So it's better to, better to just keep it in the fog. <laughs> don't we all do that? Yeah. We spend time, instead of taking the time to know what we want, and here's, here's what's really scary, is sometimes if we were to actually say out loud what we want, we would not like what we heard. We talked last week about making sure our priorities are in line with what God values. And sometimes if you were to actually articulate what you want, I want so much money that no one can ever do anything to me. Hmm. Search me and know me, O oh God. See if there's any unclean way in my heart. Well, you said it out loud. Now it's out there. At least you know. <laughs> Sometimes just saying it makes you realize, oh my gosh, that's a horrible priority thing I've been living for. Hmm. You have to articulate what you want. You know, Jesus, he had this interesting trait about him. Some, you know, there's this sweet, loving Jesus. We, we love him, but there's savage Jesus. Yeah. Savage. I like savage Jesus. Yeah. There's, this one part, there's this one story with this guy named Bartimaeus. He's blind. He's a blind beggar. He's the son of Timaeus. He was sitting by the road. And when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth coming by, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. A lot of people rebuked him saying, hey, be silent. But he cried all the more saying, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, hey, call him over here. And they called the blind man. You can imagine the blind man's kind of like going this way and saying to him, take heart, get up. He's calling you. So the guy's like, hey, Jesus actually wants to talk to you. So he throws off his cloak. He sprang up and went to Jesus. Jesus sees the blind man coming to him. And this is what Jesus says. What do you want? What do you want me to do for you? Hello, Jesus. Isn't it obvious? <laughs> He's blind. Of course he wants to see. But Jesus makes him say what he really wants. And I think that's kind of a picture of a lot of times we, we just say, God, just bless me. Just bless me. And he's like, well, what do you want? 
I just want to be blessed. And what you're really saying is, I just don't want that. But you need to I, delight yourself in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. And listen, Jesus isn't a slot machine. You don't just say, Jesus, I want this, and he gives it to you. But if you get your heart in alignment with what he wants, it says if you ask anything according to his will, it will be given to you. But oftentimes, we don't even know what we're asking for because we haven't taken out the time to figure it out. And a lot of times, we're making decisions in our marriages and in our family, and we're not thinking about where it's going to lead in the future. You're just thinking about instant gratification. And you're thinking, you don't think about what the cost is going to be down the road. But my encouragement to you is this, is this, take some time and listen, define exactly what you want. What is it you want? And you may, after you define it, you may go, ooh, I don't like that about me. Well, fix it. At least it's out in the open instead of hidden in the fog. If your spouse is doing something you don't like, define what you want from them. Say it. Well, they might get mad. Well, it's a lot better than you getting mad at them for them not knowing what they're doing wrong. Say it. Define what you want for your future and then start making decisions based on that. And listen, there will be times that God will say to you, I need you to do something that seems counterintuitive. This doesn't seem wise for your family. I think about my dad when my mom was going through a major cycle of anxiety. Right in the middle of that, my dad felt like God was calling us to, to move to Central America, which was in the middle of it, in this country in Guatemala that was in the middle of a civil war. Normally not wise based on the future you want for your spouse. My wife is having severe anxiety. Let's go to a war-torn country in Central America where everyone's blowing everybody up. But he heard from the Lord, no, this is the right decision. And the cool thing is my mom heard from the Lord too, right in the middle of her anxiety. And they got in alignment with that and it was the best thing that could have ever happened for our family. Sure, it didn't seem wise, but, but it was the right thing, wise thing. And there'll be times that God will ask you to do things that you're like, wow, that doesn't seem wise. And you seek counsel, but know this, if you'll start asking this in every area of your life, is it wise based on what I know about my past? What happened last time I did this? Because the same thing will probably happen again. Is it wise based on my present circumstances? I'm going to be honest about where I am right now. Probably not the best thing to make that financial decision. Probably not the best thing to move my family. Your marriage is struggling. I see this a lot too with people. Marriage is struggling. They've got a church community that's coming around them. And they get a job offer across the country. And they're like, oh, this would be a great chance for us to go start over. And instead of starting over, what they do is they actually go and they become rootless. They don't have their community that can help their marriage struggles and they just, the marriage just falls apart. Yeah, it may have been a great job promotion, but is it the worth the price of your marriage? Is it wise based on the price of losing your marriage? And then based on the future you want for your family, are you going to articulate what you want and say, all right, God, I want to make sure that our family is generous. I want to make sure that we are people that are known for integrity and honesty. And then every decision you make up to that point, because the small decisions lead to the big decisions. There's a pattern to the way you've decided on things. Every path has a destination. That's how you got here, right? You got here because of some series of decisions you've made. So ask yourself, is this wise? And if you'll do that, man, I am certain, you know, James, he says this, if any of you lacks wisdom, all you got to do is ask of God and he will give it to you liberally. He says he won't even hold it back if you've been making dumb decisions before. That's my loose translation. <laughs> if you ask for wisdom, it says he'll give it to you. You could have made the dumbest decision last night, but if you'll ask for wisdom now, he'll give you wisdom. And you seek that wisdom, and you begin to walk in humility before the Lord, saying, I think this is what he's saying. I'm going to go the best, forward the best I can, and you can trust that he's going to lead you as you grow in maturity. And you're not going to get turn-by-turn turn directions as you grow in maturity. But know this, if you're asking, is it wise based on what I know about myself and who God's made me to be and based on my weaknesses and my flaws and also my giftings, then you're going to find yourself living that abundant life that God has promised for you. Succeedingly, abundantly, far above all we could ask or think. The path of the righteous like the light of dawn shines brighter and brighter. But it comes from, a lot of it comes from the decisions that you make and make sure you're asking, is this wise? You guys receive that? Yeah. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you so much that you've given us access to supernatural wisdom. You're, you are, I mean, you rule the universe. And we thank you that when we ask for wisdom, you will give it to us. So I pray for every one of us here. These decisions we've got to make this week, from small decisions, like should I go out with my friends afterwards, to big decisions. Should I take the job promotion? Should I you know, take the scholarship? Whatever it is, I pray, Lord, you, we would just submit those and say, is it wise? Trust that you're guiding us. And I know that you are going to lead us places we could have never dreamed of going. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. 
or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.